Hey guys, welcome to our channel. I am Ashish and in this video, we will talk about the genetic diseases. In the previous video, we discussed about the general terms, how the genetic disease can lead to or the change in the genetic alteration can lead to a disease to manifest. We we'll talk about how the, these changes can arise, that's due to mutation or some non-mutation causes like translocation or amplification of a particular segment of a gene or particular segment of a DNA. Now, depending upon how the changes may arise, we divide the genetic disease into three categories. First one was a single gene disorder occurring due to change in a single gene. Then was a chromosomal disorder, change in the structure or the number of chromosome. Then there was the multifactorial genes, means more than one genes are responsible for a particular disease to manifest along with the environmental factors which differ from person to person like chronic heart disease, diabetes mellitus and the cleft lip. Another example also include cleft palate. Now let's start with the single gene disorders and talk about the Mendelian and the non-Mendelian modes of inheritance. If you look at the statistics of children being admitted to the hospitals, you will find that the 6 to 8 percent of the pediatric pediatric admission to hospitals is due to single gene disorders. So to all the children, suppose hundreds of children are admitted to a hospital, then only 6 to 8 percent of the pediatric disease will be the due to single gene disorder or change in a single gene. This is all about the pediatric OPD. But if you see about the adult case, it accounts for only 1%. So single gene disorders are very rare. Here is a chart from Robbins which signifies the prevalence of diseases. Family hypochlostronomia occurs in 1 in 500, polycystic kidney disease 1 in 1000, hereditary spirocytosis 1 in 5000, then we have the autosomal recessive inheritance, then a final one in 10,000. You can see the sickle cell anemia prevalence is 1 in 500. You can just one go to this chart and look at the prevalence of different single gene disorders as shows the Mendelian modes of inheritance. You can see the hemophilia occurs in 1 in 5,000 US males. We divide, divided the single gene disorders into two categories. First category is called the classical Mendelian modes of inheritance and second category is called the non-Mendelian modes of inheritance. First of all, let's start with the classical Mendelian inheritance. So what do you understand by the word gene? So gene is a part of the DNA which can express itself. Suppose DNA is made up of a number of base pairs including C, A, G, G, A, C. Suppose like that there is some base pairs present. Then which is the minimum number amount of base pairs that will be present to express itself. How the DNA can express itself? It can form mRNA which can form proteins. So minimum part of the DNA which can form protein X and express itself either to mRNA, it is called a gene. So we have divided the single gene disorder into two categories, classical Mendelian inheritance and the non-Mendelian inheritance. What do you understand with the Mendelian inheritance? According to Mendel, for each character there are two alleles present in a body. But what do you understand by the term word allele? So alleles are different part of a gene or the different gene which occupy the same position in a chromosome. As you all know, we have 23 pairs of chromosome. Out of them we have 22 pairs of autosomes or the somatic chromosome and one pair of sex chromosome which determine our sex. Out of each pair, we receive one half of the chromosome from father and the other half from our mother. So the gene responsible for a particular trait is present on both the chromosome that you inherit. So, so alleles are the different forms of a gene which occupy the same position of the lecai on a chromosome. So how can you understand this? Suppose there are two houses, two identical houses, each having a particular room. Suppose 120 rooms are present in each house. Then in the room number 4 of each house, we have an identical twin present. But that only difference between the two identical twins is that of their hair color. One is having a black hair and one is having a white hairs. Okay. So at least of what? These are the different forms of a gene which occupy the same position. Both the twins are present in the room number 4 of the two identical houses which houses signify the each of the chromosome. One is derived from the parent father and another is derived from the parent mother. Okay. So in the room number 4. Rule number 4 is the loci or the position which contains the 
identical twin that is called the gene so gene may be different but the, that's why they are called the different forms of a gene one is having black hair one is having white hair which occupy the same position the room number four in two identical houses that is the each set of chromosome this was now let's talk about the classical mendelian inheritance so according to the mendel two alleles are present which signify the character when both alleles are present the one which expresses itself in heterozygous condition it is called a dominant allele while the other one is called the recessive we will study about this in the upcoming heading so first of all let's start with the classical mendelian inheritance as you all know we divided the chromosome into two categories one is called the somatic chromosome other is called the sex chromosome so we divided the chromosome into two categories somatic or autosomal and sex chromosome sex chromosome so classical mendelian inheritance of sex chromosomes and the autosomes are different see in each category we will having a autosomal dominant and a autosomal recessive in sex chromosome as well we will having x linked dominant x linked recessive and violent why i have not talked the violent dominant or recessive because while is present alone xy is the genetic constitution of a male and y is always present alone while the x is having a companion in case of a female what about the non mendelian modes of inheritance see non mendelian means they do not fo follow the mendel law according to mendel there are only two alleles for a gene but it's not true for every case and also according to mendel for each character as often get one chromosome from parent father and the chromosome from parent mother which is not always true as in the case of the mitochondrial inheritance in which the mitochondria of mother is only transferred to the children or the offspring so non mendelian modes of inheritance include the mitochondrial inheritance or there some other example also trinucleotide repeat expansion trinucleotide try nucleotide repeat okay so these two are the examples of the non mendelian modes of inheritance we'll discussing more about the non mendelian inheritance after discussing the mendelian modes of inheritance so first of all let's start with the mendelian modes of inheritance according to mendel there are two alleles for a gene not more than that so, so according to mendel there are two alleles of or a gene means alberta alleles alleles are the different forms of a gene one may be a black hair one may be a room hair which are present in the same loci on each set of chromosome okay so according to mendel hence there are only two alleles apart from that each of them get one allele each from parent means one allele come from father and other allele will come from mother so these are the basic laws of mendel inheritance okay now with keeping this all this in mind let's start with the mendelian modes of inheritance see mendelian disorders may be due to the single gene defect and the allele which express itself is called dominant while the one which remain unexpressed in heterozygous condition is called the recessive first of all let's start with the what is a allele as i explained to you it are the different form different form of a gene occupying same loci or same location or same position on a chromosome as i explained to you there are two identical houses and each containing 120 rooms in the room number 4 they are identical twins present one with a black hair and one with a white hair so the different these are different forms of gene one is having black expression and one is having the white expression which is occupying the same loci room number 4 on a chromosome containing different part or the different regions one of what is a genotype genotype is a genetic constitution of an individual which expresses itself okay so the one which are identical suppose a codes for or suppose there is a set of gene a which codes for black hair and small a codes for brown hair so suppose a child will receive one pair each from a father 
and one pair from the or one part from the mother or from the maternal side if though both the genes on the same loci codes for black hair that's a capital a or the, both the genes codes for brown hair or small a these are called the homozygous condition so this condition in which that both the genes are similar or the expression is similar they are called the homozygous homozygous and suppose if the father codes for capital a or the black hair and the mother codes for the gene on the mother side codes for brown hair then that condition is called the heterozygous heterozygous i hope the heterozygous word is clear it's written homozygous and heterozygous now suppose both are from the are coding for the black hair then it is very obvious the phenotype or the physical appearance of the person will be of the black hair if both codes for brown hair then the physical appearance will be brown hair but the question arises now if black hair and brown hair both the genes are present then which one expresses itself now there is a term called dominant and recessive suppose black is dominant over the brown means if black is present the brown cannot express itself that's why the condition will be towards the or the favor will be towards the dominant gene so here in this case suppose black is the dominant among the following will be dominant will express itself here in this case it is black hair so dominant allele what do you understand by dominant allele in heterozygous condition in heterozygous condition which ex which allele or which gene expresses itself which allele expresses itself is called the dominant allele why we are talking about only the heterozygous condition see if if the condition is homozygous the answer is very obvious which one is present will be coding suppose black a capital a capital is present then obviously code for black hair and small a small is present then it will obviously code for the brown hair but if the condition heterozygous the one which is expressing itself in the phenotype or the physical appearance then that will called the dominant while the unexpressed unexpressed allele is called the recessive so this was all about the basic concept of the mendel morse of inheritance now he there is a term called the codominance if both the allele express itself in the equal quantity then that that is called the codominance codominance is seen in blood group inheritance blood group inheritance so what happens in codominance both allele express itself equally both allele express itself equally so this is against the mendel general modes of inheritance or over the mendel told about the inheritance as they change in the genetic constitution or single gene defect in the case of mendel inheritance can be of two types in the autosomes or in the sex chromosomes so first of all we we'll talk about the somatic changes that may be autosomal dominant or the autosomal recessive so first of all we'll talk about the autosomal dominant disorders then we'll proceed further with the sex chromosome